So I got set up just in time because the rain is hitting. So, uh... <laughs> Camping in eastern Pennsylvania, the lower half of eastern Pennsylvania, it's, um, you know, a little tricky to come across primitive campsites or things where you can actually do dispersed camping um, without driving for hours. And I just didn't want to do that. So you're stuck with things like this 22 inch fire pit with no airflow. But I'm out here and that by far outweighs these great walls. September and I guess August always seems to be a really good time for big snails and deciduous forests, at least in eastern Pennsylvania. This thing's really cool. This is a red-backed salamander kind of tree trunk a couple of feet off the ground. They seem to kind of climb the trees in this forest at night, I guess looking for food. So it's still raining out, obviously, but it's beautiful. And uh, there was some lightning and stuff, but the, the storm never really got here. The temperature's perfect. And I was soaked because I got a rain jacket off of eBay and eBay. So uh, anyhow. So I'm going to go looking for some cool, you know, mushrooms and fungi and stuff because it rained all night. But before I do, I want to make a little bit more char cloth because I use the stuff, you know, when I use a flint and steel, like a proper flint and steel. Um, those sparks are pretty cold. It's not like a ferro rod. So I use char cloth or, you know, certain tinder fungi and stuff like that to catch the spark. But normally... I use a different method for creating the char and recently I started using this old tuna fish can and you know it works okay you just gotta make sure the lid doesn't pop off when you pull it off the fire because oxygen is introduced and then your cloth starts to just glow red and forget about it after that so got little bits of denim and stuff here that I'm gonna cut up actually check this out I got a knife that was sent to me from uh, Nathan from Holtzman Gorilla Survival. And I love this thing. It's a lot of fun because the sheath is really cool. Let's see if I can show you the sheath. Um, but I've been using it, you know, I just got it and I've been trying it out this camp trip except it was pouring rain last night. Here's the sheath, okay? It's one of those hard sheaths and you can modify it so much. It came with a, its own flint and steel, you know, ferro rod and striker that attaches to the clip here and down here and it's actually really cool if you want to see those uh, i've got a video reviewing this knife it's uh it's a 1095 carbon so it's high carbon it's great steel um now granted i'm not going to lie and say something's you know cool if i don't think it's cool i'm not going to tell people hey yeah that's good go for it uh, but i do like this knife um I have to be honest, he sent it to me, so I'm not just doing this for no reason whatsoever talking about it, but I do like to, uh, you know, promote a product I like. You know, anything I like, whether I'm getting it from somebody or incentive or anything like that, I'm going to promote it because this is how I am. Same with people, you know, that's a cool person. Make friends with them. Uh, anyhow, I really like this, and I'm going to use this to create this char cloth. 
you know, it comes real sharp. Check this out. Look at that. Yeah, this thing is sharp. So um, what I do is I've got this little tin and you want to just put a tiny little hole in it so that the smoke and byproducts can leave the container as you put it over coals, but not enough, you know, opening so that the oxygen is introduced because that'll just encourage combustion. And if that happens, you're not going to have anything left. What you want to do is reduce this to just carbon so that you can, you know, introduce a spark to it. So I'm just cutting these pieces up to the desired size, you know, about an inch by an inch, throwing them in here. Now granted, the stuff gets a little sticky in there sometimes because of the byproducts. So every once in a while you might want to rub these containers down. Normally I use like foil, to be honest. You know, people use these metal tins and all that kind of stuff all the time. I just use foil and it, it works just fine. Um, I've made char cotton from cotton balls. I've done it with, you know, fungi and stuff like that. I've even done it with wood. The only problem is, it's a little tricky to carry around chunks of wood in your stuff. I'm actually going to take these threads and do it. The, the main thing, if you're doing a fabric to make a char cloth, it has to be 100% cotton. You don't want polyester or anything like that. And every once in a while I get some 100% cotton and it's got a flame retardant on it. And I don't find out until later on or until, you know, I need to create a fire and I'm like, this isn't working. There you go. So another really cool thing to use is Amadou, but that's, uh, that's part of the horse hoof fungi. You know, you cut them down and there's a certain layer and it's like velvet or, or felt. And uh, it's incredible stuff, but I'll talk about that some other time. So right now, I'm just going to cover this up like that. I'm going to put it on the fire. Or not the fire, but like kind of on the coals. And you'll see smoke shooting out the top. Once the smoke stops, you remove this from the fire. Don't open it. Don't let it come open. Trust me. You lose everything if that's the case. Another thing I love about this sheath is I can carry it traditional, you know, like this. And I like to do the, the scout type thing on the back. Um, so that way I could just pull it out like that, you know. Um, but you can also hang this around your neck. But I got enough stuff there already and, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm, if you're interested in this, go to Holtzman Gorilla Survival. It's a website. It's also on Amazon. And uh, I'm sure there's all sorts of other stuff. I actually haven't had a chance to check it out, really, um, because I wanted this to be a surprise. I didn't want to know what was coming to me because he contacted me. He's like, hey, how would you like uh, to check this out? Um, just mention it in the video and you can keep it. Um, so far, I really like it. I really like it. And it's like a quarter inch thick. You know, that's nice. You know, for a good camping bushcraft knife, you want it to be a quarter inch. It doesn't have to be. Uh, I usually prefer to have a complete 90 degree edge on the spine so I can use that to throw sparks also. So a lot of my knives, I actually grind the spine down so it's a nice, hard, 90 degree edge um, to throw a spark, which isn't the best thing to do with your knife. Um, some people use the bladed part. You know, unless you're in a true survival situation, I wouldn't do that. And in a survival situation, I wouldn't because you dull your knife. And sometimes you can fracture the blade or something like that. But I'm really liking this thing and I love the, the color scheme. But uh, it fits in my hand nice and neat, you know. At first I thought it was too small for my hand, but this isn't bad. This is actually pretty good. I'm actually liking this a lot. So, and you don't want it to be too big because it catches on things and stuff because this might be EDC for me. I've had an EDC since 2004 where I've been carrying a, a Mora, um, you know, a Mora knife for, well, every single day. I even had that thing in the hospital. You know, sometimes I forget I have it, you know. Anyways, if you have anything else for me to check out, feel free to send it my way, especially if it's uh, camp related or outdoor gear. If you have a raincoat, I'd love that. I've gotten two of them on eBay. 
I mean, I knew what, that I was gambling, you know, taking a risk. But I got two of them on eBay. Neither of them are water resistant. I wanted to get like a, a good brand um, that would cost me like $90 or more. I don't want to pay that price. Find something on eBay and sometimes you get what you pay for. It's just like the casino, right? You might hit the jackpot by spending a dollar. You might go home bankrupt. I came home soaked last night. Um, let's get this going. So these have to be some kind of beach galls. I mean, there's beach trees everywhere. Or maybe midge galls. I have no idea what they are. They look kind of cool. A little breezy. This, or these, are Bryopsidae. Well, we usually call it moss because it's moss. Wow, I wonder what this sounded like. Look how the bark buckled on this tree as it started to come down. That thing is waiting to fall. Check out this, uh, this twisted tree. I mean, this thing is so twisted. You can usually spot that in the bark, like the grain of the bark can be spiraled sometimes. If you're harvesting a stave to make a bow out of, you try to find the straightest grain you can. But you gotta admit, this looks pretty cool. There's a few different Indian pipes. They all look the same, but this pink one here usually has more pink present, which is why it gets its name. This is not a fungi. This is a, a plant that lacks chlorophyll. You know, there's no green in it, no chloroplasts. I haven't really found much at all this trip as far as insects or anything's concerned. I was talking to my mom on the phone and she's like, why don't you use your UV flashlight? And you know what? That's a great idea. Check this out. I mean, these ferns are so amazing. Uh, talk about ghost plants. You know, ferns are, they're plants, but they're like the, one of the most primitive forms of plant. But that's not what I want to talk about right now. Just look how these things fluoresce. I mean, most plants don't. They don't respond whatsoever. Look at the fungus on these stems. This is really neat. Like, I mean, I'm looking at several different stems right now, and they're all different colors. This looks like some kind of painting or something. That is so cool looking. You know, in, in like the Pine Barrens, it's usually just some of the mushrooms that fluoresce. 
look at this right here. This leaf has some fungi on it. I don't know what kind, but uh, when I turn on my UV light, it glows like a bright reddish orange. I'd never expect it to look red. This is really cool. Okay, so I know the video is getting pretty long and I'm only about halfway through, so I've decided to break it up into two parts. But, you know, it's so far it's been a good trip. You know, a lot of rain the first night and everything like that, but it was just nice to hang out around camp. And, um, you know, then to try out that new knife that Nathan sent me, it's really cool. And uh, then I showed you some char cloth and all that kind of stuff. But my favorite thing so far is the way all those ferns and fungi fluoresce under the ultraviolet light. I'm so glad my mom suggested that to me. It's really cool stuff and I only wish I spent more time filming and photographing those, those plants and fungi because it was really cool. <laughs> now there's a lot more in store um, including a couple of you know bushcraft hacks or tips and a really cool first aid technique um, well, you'll just have to wait and find out in part two. So in the meantime, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in part two. See you then.